This is video um, four, biotechnology. I got cut off on video three, so we'll just pick up where I left off. Um, we were talking about stem cell research uh, that um, stem cells have a ton of applications, but obviously it is highly controversial. They can make um, new organs. They can help fight in cardiovascular disease, brain diseases, any diseases that uh, are a result of the degradation of your original cells. But the stem cells that work best come from embryos. And so obviously this is um, very controversial. This process is super present in plant cells. We call them totipotent. Essentially, I can take fragments of a plant and then they will generate a totally new organism. Um, if you have ever seen someone you know propagate a plant, or basically they have a little cup of water, a clipping from a plant just sitting in water so it grows roots, we'll make a totally new plant. My grandparents are super old school European. They do this all the time. And pretty much all of the plants on their farm now were because they saw a plant they liked, they clipped it off, put it in water, and they created a whole new plant. Stem cells in the human are undifferentiated, and they are most common in the zygote or in the egg and in your um, bone marrow. Uh, they are the ones in your uh, zygote are totipotent cells that have the ability to create a whole new organism. And then there are also cells that are pluripotent, um, which can only give rise to most, but not a whole organism. Um, and so we have both of them. Just harvesting them is very difficult. Um, in 2007, uh, the induced pluripotent stem cells were developed, or iPS cells. Uh, these are reprogramming genes are spliced into normal human somatic cells. This tricks the cell into thinking that it's a stem cell again, and then the cell can be developed into um, whatever you desire. This would eliminate the need for embryonic stem cells. Um, these two guys won the Nobel Prize in 2012 for these cells. Um, and then the last section is forensic biotechnology. Um, for forensic biotechnology is used to identify criminals, disaster victim, victims, biological parents, anytime we don't know who an individual is. Um, essentially, we use gel electrophoresis to sequence the DNA, um, and it ends up looking like this. Uh, usually, this is uh, oh, they, they only require a small amount of DNA to do this, and so... Um, they take this thing called a polymerase chain reaction, they make thousands of copies of the DNA, and then they run it through gel electrophoresis. Um, the act of making multiple replications is called PCR. The PCR product, or the DNA strands, are analyzed using gel electrophoresis. Everyone's pattern that we saw on that electrophoresis is going to be different, therefore um, we would be able to determine an unknown patient and compare it to uh, if we had, you know, known sequences. And so we would see uh, that they have the same sequences. Um, this has been really instrumental in the release of a lot of people um, from jail that were um, blamed for crimes that they did not commit. When we were not able to use tiny fragments of DNA, sometimes there was not enough evidence to uh, not convict someone. Now that we're able to reproduce that DNA and make much larger change, we can test DNA that was much smaller before. We also have the ability to sequence DNA. This means that we know the gene we're looking for and can analyze someone's DNA for a specific sequence. Uh, therefore, we can look and see if people have certain genes. Um, some people opt not to know, but some people who have a history of certain diseases look for uh, these sequences. Uh, take a minute to look through these and think about uh, where your line is for this biotechnology. The final PowerPoint that we are going to look at for biotechnology is um, conjugation and um, transduction or increasing variation through DNA uh, transfer. Um, 
how does a bacterium fight off antibiotics? So there are three main ways, and we'll talk about why we're talking about bacteria a little bit later. The three main ways are the membrane protein um, pumps the antibiotics out of the cell. Or the prokaryote can produce an enzyme that will degrade the antibiotic, or the prokaryote can produce an enzyme that will change the structure of the antibiotic. Um, bacteria are becoming highly resistant to antibodies. How does that happen? Multiple ways. Um, they could have a natural or inherited resistance that's passed on from bacteria to bacteria. They can acquire resistance, or we might see some random mutations. Um, it all depends. Um, there are ways other than mutations that prokaryotes can obtain uh, resistance. It's called horizontal gene transfer. Basically, um, one bacterium gives the resistance to another bacteria uh, through the basically transfer of a gene into its gene sequence. Um, the transformation causes a, gene, a change in genotype and um, then can therefore change the phenotype. This occurs when a cell in a, um, in a for, takes foreign genetic material and incorporates it into its own. It becomes a recombinant cell. Um, and then we see the transduction of that as well. Feel free to um, go through this at your own pace. It should be pretty self-explanatory. I'm happy to talk about it um, in class if you'd like me to. Um, This con these concepts are not super, super important for the AP test. Go through them at your own pace. Um, pause, read, take notes. Um, we'll talk a tiny bit about it when we get back, but not a ton.